tomorrow we are going walleye fishing. I'm going to meet up with one of my followers tomorrow and we're going to get on his boat of some sort and we're going to go try to slay some walleye. He's been killing it so he invited me and finally set a date and time and I'm going to go meet up with him tomorrow and we're going to go fishing. And when it comes to walleye fishing, I don't know a lot about it. I'm actually rather new to walleye fishing. So I basically asked him a bunch of questions about what gear to get, lures, all that good stuff. I'm going to go through my rod and reel setup as well as our lures or our techniques we're going to be using according to what he has told me. And so this right here is probably one of the better rods I've seen for 30 bucks. I am not endorsed by any of these companies. I just tell you guys what I use and what I think you guys will like. This right here is the Daiwa Triforce rod. It's a seven foot medium fast rod and it's 30 bucks. I was originally gonna buy the Ugly Stick GX2, I believe, and I was gonna get that in the seven foot version. And after looking at the selection, I came across this rod, which again is the Daiwa Triforce. And this rod right here to me, it just seems like a much better rod than the Ugly Stick GX2. The first thing is it's very light. It's a lot lighter than the Ugly Stick GX2 and the material on it feels a little better and it also just looks nicer. Um, that's the rod. It's a two-piece rod. And then uh, on the reel, it's the Shimano Solstice 2500. And so Andrew, the one I'm going to meet up with, he told me we're going to be jigging in 80 feet of water. And so I went and bought a full spool of Power Pro Braid, a 10 pound Power Pro Braid, and this is 150 yards of Power Pro Braid spooled onto my reel right here. So right here I actually have a 16 pound fluorocarbon leader tied to my braid using a double uni knot. And so this little guy right here is called a jigging wrap, it's made by Rapala. This is a size 7. I've never used something like this before so all we're gonna do with these little guys is we're gonna drop it down from the boat straight down 80 feet until it hits the bottom and we're just gonna jig it up and then we're gonna let it sink sink back down and we're just gonna jig it up and let it sink back down and so yeah that's my setup that I'm gonna be going with we'll see how it turns out All right, well, today we are out here on Lake Roosevelt, and I am out here with the man, Andrew. And Andrew hit me up on Instagram like a couple weeks ago about walleye fishing, and he's just been hammering the walleye. So I'm new to walleye fishing, and walleye fishing is something I've been wanting to get into, and he's been killing it. So I was like, let's plan a trip. I'll come up, and we can go slay some walleye. So we're getting loaded up. We're on the dock right now, and then we're gonna drive or motor down to some place that I have no idea where it is and hopefully we can just put the smack down on some big walleyes. Time will tell. Time will tell. Alright well this is what we're using today. Got a bunch of Impala jigging wraps. Biggest thing is when you're fishing these is when you are letting it down. You kind of want to keep that line tight with the jig. I see. <laughs> A little dinker. I'll take it though. <laughs> Just because it's the first it's one. Not the dinker of the as dinky as the last one they caught. I'm just going to keep it just because it's the first one. Okay. Yep. On. Feels a little better. Ooh. Definitely a little better. Now is this more like the average size? Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, I missed one. Yep. 
It was just like a rock. <laughs> Oh, gotcha. You were right, he's back. <laughs> oh, feels a little better. Perfect. I'll take these all day. Fish on. Feels like a better one. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Maybe they couldn't decide which one to bite. <laughs> yeah, it feels a little decent. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. First one on the purple one. Oh, another one. Oh, it feels like a good one. <laughs> Ooh, this oh, no! It came off. That one felt like a good one, too. Oh, dang it. It always has to be the one that feels big. It's like a decent one. A lot of head shakes. Huh. Same size. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Ooh, there we go. Yep, fish on. Man, that one bumped it hard. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, unless the weight is just uh, getting a couple more pounds. <laughs> and it's way out there. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a, that's a improvement. Yeah. First one off of what is this rig called? Uh, just bottom 
bouncer and spinner. Off of bottom bouncers and a night crawler. Is there a way to tell like how what's a female and what's a male? Or is yeah, it I mean, once you clean them you'll be able to see if they have Oh eggs just or just not. Oh. Do they have eggs now? Yeah. They do? So they're pretty much just starting get a bunch of eggs and then once spawn and just get them all out. Yeah. Ooh, there we go. Alright, so midday update. We first started off just using uh, jigging wraps and we caught a we caught a few off of them. And then uh, after a while it kind of slowed down so we switched over to these uh, bottom bouncers with a night little, little night crawler. And uh, we both just got our first walleyes off of them. So we're just trolling for now and uh, at this pace, there's no doubt we'll catch our limit eventually. Back to back. <laughs> I like it going downstream. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. Andrew's hooked up. Probably like two or three minutes right after he caught that one. Ooh, that's a good one. Nice. Oh, nice. Feel like a good one? Ooh, that's a good one. It's a really good one. Nice. Got it? Yep, got him. Was it the one hard hit? Huh? Was it the one hard hit? No. <laughs> it was a good hit, but I'll take it. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one though. Yeah. Nice. nice. Ooh, nice. Good one. Yeah. Good enough. That was the most subtle thumb ever. I was like, yeah, I hesitated. I yeah, I hesitated. I was like, I don't know if that's a fish. Nice one. Three more. Super school right there. Got one? Yeah. Mm. Drop this right back down. The end of my old line up. <laughs> Ooh yeah, take those all day.
we have made it back to the boat launch. Got the Inmar just tied up because we're gonna put it back on the trailer and we're gonna head back to Andrew's house, clean up everything, get all my junk out of his truck and put it in my car and then I gotta drive home. But that's pretty much gonna do it for today. Right now, you guys can see we're losing daylight. So it's about four o'clock maybe. I don't know what time it is, but it's like three or four o'clock. And we did it. Caught our limit on walleye plus a bonus burbot. So up here in Lake Roosevelt, the regs for the walleye is you can catch 16 walleye per person. Uh, no minimum size. And we both caught our limit. We actually caught more than our limit, but we released a lot of the small ones. And so we just kept 32 of the walleyes that were a little bit bigger just because the little ones, they were kind of small. And I don't think it was worth it to clean it. All right, so right now we're gonna clean this walleye. Uh, yesterday when we got to the boat launch, uh, there was an elderly woman who came and talked to us and we gave her a couple fish. So since I'm new to walleye fishing, I haven't had much time to clean walleye. So bear with me, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. And so I'm just going based off of what I learned from watching YouTube videos and reading uh, blogs about how to clean a walleye. So there's about a million ways one can go with cleaning a walleye. But the one I found to be probably easier, in my opinion, is the one I'm going to attempt to do right now. So, And so all we're going to do is we're going to fillet the fish, and we're just going to basically get boneless fillets out of it. So we're going to take our fillet knife and go right behind these two fins right here. And we're just going to cut at an angle towards the head, because if you cut straight down, if you cut straight down right here, you guys can see we're missing this piece of meat up here. So when we cut down, we're going to cut down so that we get all the way up to the back of its head. So we're just going to take our knife right behind the two fins right here. Just cut down. And keep in mind my fillet knife is not that sharp because uh, it's a Walmart special. So once we have our fish cut like this, we're just going to take our fillet knife and cut it all the way to the vent right about here. Just going to cut there. Now we're just going to dig our fillet knife and get it right along the spine and we're just going to cut through all the pin bones so we're, we're not trying to fillet it off the bone right now we're just going to cut through all the bone hold it through and we're just going to leave a little bit of skin on here just gonna flip it around so now we still have this piece attached now we're just going to do the same exact thing again we're trying to cut angle to get as much meat as we can up here and now once we get down to the spine again, we're just going to cut through. And again, we're going to leave a little bit of skin on here. Cut this. So now all we have is just a butterfly of fillets. And this is where all the pin bones are. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to separate the meat from the skin. So right now there's a pin bone right along here. All we're going to do is we're going to take our knife and we're just going to kind of cut it in a, as a bowl. So this right here is just bone and just the stomach lining. So right now there's also this pin bone that runs right in the center of this fillet. And we're just going to take our finger and we're just going to run until we feel where the pin bone stops, which is right about here. So the last pin bone I can feel is right about here. So the pin bones, they're kind of like vertical, so you don't need to make too far of a cut here. You can just go almost like right along the pin bone. Just kind of cut. Yep, that's where the pin bone ends. And then we're just gonna cut this as well. Again, my fillet knife's not very sharp. I don't recommend doing this with a Dull, uh, dull fillet knife. Then fill it. No more bones. And that right there is one piece of fillet. Now we're basically going to do the same thing on this side. So once you're done, you should have a boneless, like a Y shaped fillet. And we're just going to do the same on this piece right here. So all we're going to do is we're just going to basically trim out this lining and these bones right here. 
So now again, we've removed the stomach lining and some of the bones and we're just gonna feel for the pin bones again. So the pin bone ends right about here. So we're just gonna take our knife Cut about there, and again, just feel it. No more pin bones. And that is pretty much how I filleted my walleye for this one. Today, all we're doing with the fish is we're just gonna season it with this Cajun seasoning by McCormick's. Once we are done with the Cajun seasoning, we're just gonna batter it up in the Louisiana fish fry from a last catch and cook video because that's just what I have, so leftovers. We got some tortillas, some lettuce, some tapatio hot sauce, and then we got some sharp cheddar and those are all going into the taco. And right now, I also have some french fries that I am baking in the oven to go with these tacos. All right, well, as said before, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna season this, this fish up with some Cajun seasoning. Now, with Cajun, I love Cajun, so we're gonna, we're gonna put a lot of Cajun seasoning on here. Just flip it around. Here it is, we got our tacos and we got our fresh french fries. Just threw a little bit of salt on the french fries. I would prefer juice, but Mountain Dew is all we have, so we're just gonna drink Mountain Dew for this case. Now, the fish looks amazing. I wish you guys could smell that Cajun seasoning, but all we've got left to do is just throw in some hot sauce and it's chow time. Just gonna sprinkle some hot sauce on here. Just a little bit to uh, give it some heat. And, rookie mistake, I don't have ketchup so we're just gonna eat french fries by itself. So, these tacos look absolutely amazing. So, as always, give thanks to the good Lord above for providing. Here we go, first bite of this amazing looking taco. Out of all the freshwater species that I have tasted before, walleye definitely takes first place. I don't think there's a single freshwater fish that comes close to what walleye tastes like. Taste is one thing, but the texture of walleye meat is just something else. Well, not sure if you guys can tell, but that white walleye meat is second to none. So, you guys pretty much got the gist of this I'm gonna finish eating my taco and just finish this plate of fries and that's gonna do it for this video so um, again just a huge huge shout out to Andrew for taking me out and taking me straight to his honey hole I mean I really didn't do anything 
Andrew was the one who put in the time, the effort, and the money to go find all these walleye. And for him to just invite me and just take me straight out to where he's been caught catching walleye, that's pretty awesome. So Andrew, if you're watching this, thank you for taking me out. I really do appreciate it. But for now, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.